Welcome to the 2007 NCAA Women's Bowling Championships. Maryland Eastern Shore taking on Vanderbilt here in suburban Orlando. Maryland Eastern Shore knocked off the number two seed, Nebraska, while Vanderbilt took care of the top seed, Fairley Dickinson, last night to advance to today's championship. And welcome to Orlando. Beth Mullins along with Chris Barnes, a former Collegiate Player of the Year as well as a U.S. Open champion during your pro days. And, Chris, an exciting time for both of these clubs. They have never been this far before in the tournament. It is a great day. They're both after their first national title, and this atmosphere is electric. Maryland Eastern Shore has already celebrated a conference championship this year, and now they want to back that up with a national title. Yeah, they've come a long ways. This is their fourth straight finals appearance. They're looking to build on three straight finals, seventh place finishes, and get their first title today. And here is a look at the Lady Hawks in action in that MEAC championship in Norfolk, Virginia. A real team effort. It is a team effort. They are very balanced, and they have one player that's been very solid for them, freshman Marion Singleton who's from Lockport, New York, the very hometown of Brad Angelo, a PBA Tour star. And one of her mentors as Marion celebrates the championship with her teammates. She is in that five spot, the anchor spot, which is so important, and she's just a freshman. Yeah, fantastic player. She's come a long ways in her first year, and she's done a lot to make sure this team has gotten to where they are today. It'll be interesting to watch because her counterpart on the other side for Vanderbilt is also a freshman in the anchor spot, and that's Josie Ernest. Well, she certainly hasn't had any trouble coming through in the clutch. She was the anchor bowler earlier this week when Vanderbilt shot the second-ever 300 game in the NCAAs. And this is a program that's only been around for three years, so extraordinary how far they've come. The anchor position, that five spot, so important. Perhaps the second most pivotal would be the top spot, and that's Michelle Pelliquin for Vanderbilt. And she's made a big contribution to this team. She stepped aside from the anchor position to become the catalyst of this team as the leadoff player, and this team goes as Michelle Pelliquin goes. It's time to talk, too, about the format for these NCAA championships. It's what we call a Baker format, and it's a little different than what you see on the pro circuit. Absolutely. The Baker format is the backbone of collegiate bowling. Each player will bowl two frames with the first player bowling the first and sixth, and you'll see the fifth bowler, the anchor player, will bowl the pivotal tenth frames. And we are about to crown a new national championship. A national champion here, Fairleigh Dickinson, the winner a year ago. Nebraska winning back-to-back -back in 04 and 05. So today it's either Maryland Eastern Shore or Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt in black will start things off with Michelle Pelliquin in the leadoff. The sophomore from Enfield, Connecticut. Both these clubs very young. And she opens it up with a strike. Exactly the way you want to get started. As we said before, the Commodores tend to fly the way she flies. So exactly what Coach John Williams was hoping for as a leadoff player. Laura Zanrusha, the sophomore from Binghamton, New York, and Susquehanna Valley High School. Her first throw leaves that seven-pin standard. A little bit of a bad break here as you watch the head pin go to the go to the sidewall. Kicks back, spins around, even bounces off the sidekick again, but doesn't knock over the seven pin. Spare shot for Zan Lucia. And she picks it up. And both teams got exactly what they wanted, rather be off players. They both hit the pocket, both make good shots. So now Caitlin Reynolds for Vanderbilt, the sophomore from Loves Park, Illinois. To the left of the head pin, way the two stay standard. This is probably to be a little bit to be expected early on. Uh, only one shot every five minutes or so. They had a break right before they started this match, and nerves take their toll in a national championship match. Game. A little different uh, bowling today as it was yesterday or the day before. They've been here uh, most of the week. Eight teams advancing to the national championship finals, and these are the only two left standing. And she takes care of business. And Reynolds gets the spare in the second frame for Vanderbilt. 
And now Michelle Wallace coming a long way for her collegiate career. The freshman from Bend, Oregon found her way to Princess Anne, Maryland. Her first roll. Some work to do here. Just a little bit outside of target. Has that crossed the arrows at about the eighth board? She's going to want to be around the tenth board. Both these teams are very good track players, and by track players, I mean they play very well between the ninth and the thirteenth boards. And the two, four, five, and eight remain. Now the spare shot from Wallace. Who's that one open? Third frame coming up now for Vanderbilt. Karen Bible, the sophomore from Brick, New Jersey. She too is a little right of the head pin. And I think both these teams are going to get more comfortable as they get deeper into this match. The idea is really to stay close early, I would think, and then catch your roll, get your feet underneath you, and catch a stride in games three through six. Best four out of seven to decide the national championship. We are here in game one. The score shot. Rago cleans it up. So now in the third frame for Maryland Eastern Shore is Megan Raymond, the only senior in the match from Cumberland, Maryland. Leaves the 10 up. Really good shot here. As you can see, this one crosses just inside the second arrow. Makes a nice move at the pocket. The six pin goes right around the 10 pin. Kind of a bad break. Just a touch light. Probably less than half a board light in the pocket where she'd like to be. And also... So now back to Vanderbilt here in the fourth frame, and it's Mandy Kiley, the sophomore from Brighton, Colorado. And the only left-hander in the match starts out with a strike. Jessica Worsley will now look to counter. Junior from New Jersey, the same hometown as Karen Greigel. Oh, the the Commodores. Here's the nine still standing. Just a touch high there. Not really a bad shot at all. Almost got a really bad break with the four nine. You see, she's playing a little bit further to the right, pointing it up towards the head pin. And luckily, the head pin just kicks the four pin out of there, leaving a nine pin. Relatively easy spare. Worsley right, gets it done. Vanderbilt with the early lead here in game one. And now Josie Ernest in the five spot, the anchor leg. Here's that 4 9 you well, were we talking just talked about. talked about it. And <laughs> just a touch high. Josie also tends to play pretty direct. And uh, and she's a little firmer. She's even playing from a little further left, which should eliminate this. But the headpin this time does not kick the four out. Difficult 4-9. Freshman from Vandalia, Illinois, playing in her first national championship match. Gives them both up. Well, not by much. Just about hit it perfect. That was less than Less than an inch at 60 feet away from being ideal. So now an opening here for the Lady Hawks and Marion Singleton, the freshman from Lockport, New York. Her first roll of the day. Takes down nine. That's something to watch for. That's two really good shots here on this right lane and two ringing 10 pins. Watch the six pin. The second one from the right as it goes right around the bottom of the 10 pin. 
Singleton will look to pick up the spare here. They're down by a pin at this point here in the fifth. Got it. Midway through game one in our best of seven match to decide the national championship. Vanderbilt up by just a single pin. We'll take a break here in Orlando. It's the NCAA Women's Bowling National Championship. Welcome to the NCAA Women's Bowling Championships. Maryland Eastern Shore taking on Vanderbilt here at the Brunswick Wakaiva Lanes in Orlando. The NCAA Women's Bowling Championships presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Beth Mowens along with Chris Barnes. Glad you could be with us midway through this first game of our best of seven to decide the national championship in Vanderbilt with the slight edge. Both teams got off to a pretty good start. Uh, one miss spare by, by Maryland Eastern Shore. Vanderbilt had an unlucky break with a 4-9, and it's basically even now with a one-pin advantage and five frames to decide game one. Baker format, so you have five players on a side. They each roll just two frames. So you want to talk about some pressure and having to be clutch. And stepping up and delivering in the leadoff spot is Michelle Peliquin. That's her second strike. She's done exactly what she's won, what her coach, John Williams, wanted to do here. She's been the catalyst, and she's done, led the way. Let's see if Zanrusha can respond. Laura leaves the eight up. Check that the five pin still standing. She was able to pick up her spare in her first roll back in the opening frame. And she's able to convert. Vanderbilt up by a couple. As we move now to the seventh. Caitlin Reynolds has emerged in the uh, last uh, third of the season to earn a spot in the starting lineup. The 10 pin still standing. She has been instrumental in their success here at the NCAA championships this week. Has really come on strong. We are in game one, best of seven. It will be the first bowling national championship for the winner of this one. They have never been this far before in the tournament. She takes down the 10 pin. I would imagine, Chris, you play both professionally and, and collegiately, the Baker format. Does it put a little more pressure on you when you know you've only got two opportunities to help your team out? Absolutely. This is the hardest format, I think, for any bowler to bowl in. You have four other people counting on you the entire time. You're only throwing one shot every five minutes or so, really. And uh, it's difficult to get a rhythm. You have to feed a lot of energy off your teammates. Uh, and opens really make huge differences in the team's energy. Wallace with a strike, and then Greigel gets it right back. No smiles a moment ago for Wallace. She left an open frame back in the second and then was able to come back with the strike. Maryland Eastern Shore still down by two pins. And here comes Raymond. Picked up a spare back in the third. Wobbler. And the eight pin stays standing. As the only senior on this team, she does provide a lot of stability. She's been here much longer than the rest of the teams. Uh, two really young teams here today. Lots of talent. Megan is playing in her fourth NCAA tournament. She was a part of that team that bowled 300 three years ago as a freshman. The series, the Coke Classic storyline, the first meeting between these two back in November, and Vandy won big, Chris. And then they met again in February. It was a little closer. It was. Uh, they have a little bit of history, not a lot, but uh, it would certainly paint 
the Lady Hawks as the underdog in this match today. And they're going to make the eight, but the two stays up, so an open frame here for Raymond. Mandy boosts the lead back up to 14. Kylie on the left. This is no time. She's trying to put a dagger in him right there. Last time she went just a little bit light, was able to slash the rack open for a strike. This time just a little bit lighter and leaves the 3-5-6. Talked about Vandy, just the third year that uh, they have had a bowling program. They won their first team championships during the regular season. Kylie won the first ever individual title at one of their tournaments this year. And cannot convert there, so we are back to even now with Jessica Worsley stepping up. It's a huge mistake there, getting no pins on that count. They actually went down by two pins. So Eastern Shore trying to take advantage of the open frame from Kylie here in the ninth. Just Ernest and Singleton left to bowl here after Worsley. To decide game one, and she converts. So Maryland Eastern Shore will have the lead as we move on to the final two bowlers here in game one. Josie Ernest, big time for Josie. Looks like she made just a little bit of an adjustment there. The last shot went high. The time your ball goes a little bit left to the pocket where you want to, you move your feet a little bit left. That one was high flush. This is what she's done all tournament long for Vanderbilt in the 10th frame. Looking to strike out. Her coach, John Williamson, says she's as fierce a competitor as I've ever seen around the sporting world. That was a huge shot. That would have made UMES double in the 10th frame and get as much as nine if she got all three. Now on the spare, UMES will have to fill 19 pins in the 10th to win game one. And that'll all be on the freshman, Marion Singleton. Final ball from Ernest. That's the spare. So an opportunity now for the Lady Hawks and Marion Singleton to grab game one. Vanderbilt leading throughout. And then the open frame from Kylie in the eighth, giving Maryland Eastern Shore a chance here. Singleton leaves the 10 pin standing. Doesn't hurt him, but she would have liked to head that strike there and, and had two shots to get yeah. nine. Now, now she'll have to make the spare and strike on her fill ball to win game one. Gives herself an opportunity. A strike here wins game one for the Lady Hawks. The freshman from Lockport, New York. The MEAC champion this year, their MEAC tournament MVP. Strike to win it. Got that one just a little bit wide. So Vanderbilt takes game one. And they've got the early lead in the national championship. Vanderbilt takes game one of the best of seven series. They hold off a late charge from Maryland Eastern Shore to secure game one, 167-165. And... Chris, we saw the nerves coming out a little bit. The scores have been much higher throughout the week, and now that they're on television, the bright lights are shining. Uh, a little bit uh, nervous in game one, and we'll see if they can settle down a little bit here in the second. That's exactly right, Brad, and I think the one thing that Maryland Eastern Shore has going for them is it is best of seven. They have a chance to settle down and get their feet underneath them. 
and do what they've done all week, and that's beat the best. Laura Zanrusha. High game of 257 this year. Interesting story. She actually missed a month of the season, left the team in early January, and then returned to the team in early February. For personal reasons, picks up the spare there. Coach said it took a little time for the rest of the team to adjust, but uh, she has worked her way back into their good graces. And now Michelle Pelliquin. Of the year last season nationally. And that'll be something to look for as these teams go back and forth from lane to lane as the lanes will change as each ball goes down there. It moves the oil around. The teams that make the adjustments fastest moving from lane to lane will be the ones that get the early advantage. Aliquin now looking to cover the four. Got just enough of it. And it should be going back and telling our teammates here is that this lane hooks a little bit more and probably for each player to move, maybe a board left with their feet to make the adjustment. That's the interesting thing with the Baker format. You see the rest of the teammates standing back there and they are able to share information with one another about the conditions on the lanes as well as pump each other up <laughs> as we've seen throughout game one. A little bit of a pitch out here for Michelle. She's struggling a little bit. Drellin's running a little bit hot for her. Feet get a little bit quick. Ball gets behind her. Traps her and it gets going to the right and never recovers. Left an open frame and then also struck in her two opportunities in game one. And converts. Now bring up Caitlin Reynolds. John Williamson calls her the most improved player on the team this year. Her best finish, a second place finish down in Alabama. He gets the strike. Megan Raymond now. a little bit hot for the four pin almost tripped the four this ball is just a little bit inside a target it was in around the 14th board she's looking to be around the 12th or 13th board pretty good shot here relatively easy spare again coach Sharon Gamel says they look to Megan for her leadership and her high energy and she takes care of that and Vanderbilt as they did in game one, they jump out to the early lead here as we move to the third frame now of Leslie Greigel, or Karen Greigel, excuse me. Back-to-back -back strikes here for Vanderbilt. She has a little history of winning as the co-captain of three straight New Jersey State championship teams. High school bowling is huge in New Jersey. Yep. That's no small feat there. Maryland Eastern Shore trying to keep things together here as Vanderbilt uh, has the momentum here early in game two. They've already taken game one. What we talked about earlier with the rhythm, they just seem a little bit out of sorts. Nobody's really got lined up and thrown some good shots to spark anything for them yet. We're going to convert the spare there and some emotion from Worsley. Plus 15. Andy Kiley looking to make it three straight, and she does. Really good shot there. Speed was better than the shot before, where she got a little bit too firm. This time, softened it up a little bit. It was able to pick up, make that extra couple of board move in the back, and tumble them all to the right. So now Maryland Eastern Shore in a 25-pin hole here as we move to the fifth frame, and Marion Singleton... See how she bounces back from that missed opportunity to win game one on the high side there. Three, six, and ten are up. 
This shot also just a little bit high. She need, she has a little more rotation than some of her teammates. Her feet need to be a little bit further left, using a little bit angle, more angle to the right before her ball hooks through the pins. Singleton leaves it open. The 3610 is one of the toughest spares, at least on the tour. I wouldn't expect it to be much different here today with all the lights and cameras. Vanderbilt's lead now balloons to 40 pins. They've got three strokes in a row. Make it four. Josie Ernest knocks them all down. And Vandy is rolling here in game two. Reynolds, Greigel, Kylie, and Ernest. Four strikes in a row for the Commodores as they build the big lead in game two. Vandy taking game one. It was close. 167-165. And now the three-time MEAC champions are in a big hole here in game two. Midway through as we open up the sixth. And Zanarusha picked up a spare in her first roll. And now we'll have to do that again. We often see the uh, players use a different ball for their first shot and then trying to pick up the spare. They are allowed to use five different bowling balls how they see fit. And one of Moa's will be a spare ball, which is something made of a, a plastic or a hard, harder polyester material. Doesn't hook very much. Eliminates the chop. Really. Chop the front pin off the back pin as she nearly did right there. Exactly the reason the strategy behind it. Vanderbilt working on four strikes in a row for their leadoff now. Michelle Peloquin Everybody now with a strike in this game for Vanderbilt. As the lead continues to build. Up by 60 now as we go to the seventh frame. Wallace answers. That's the first strike of game two for Vanderbilt. And this will be the opportunity for UMES as they'll have some free frames of practice. And just getting lined up, no pressure, nothing on them. As Vanderbilt has pretty much put the hammer on him here. Reynolds struck her last roll. Two in a row. Caitlin Reynolds continues to come on strong late in the season for Vanderbilt. That's six straight now for the Commodores. Not giving Maryland Eastern Shore much of a chance. The 10 wobbles and stays up for Megan Raymond. The number's looking awfully good. Lots of X's on the board for Vanderbilt. The only non-strike was Peliquin in the leadoff spot back in the opening frame. Maximum score now that the Lady Hawks can shoot is 200. And with Vanderbilt on a 240 pace already. Not looking good right now for Maryland Eastern Shore here in game two. Greigel. And this is low. Two, four, five, and seven still to deal with. That ends a streak of six strikes in a row, but she converts on the spare. Vanderbilt on its way to a 2-0 lead here in the best of seven national championship match. Worsley. Maryland Eastern Shore looking for a little confidence booster right now. Looking to see if they can build some momentum to take with them into game three. Mandy Kiley. And that'll do it. Vanderbilt mathematically now the winner here in game two to build this 2-0 lead as they will just roll it out now.
and he leaves it open. Six strikes in a row here in game two for Vanderbilt to just bust this thing open. Now Marion Singleton in the 10th frame for NBS. 10 split. For them, this left lane seems like it's hooking a little bit more in the middle. Not quite as much hold. And so repeatedly, they have shots that are going high, high, high. They're going to have to make the adjustment when they come back over for game four. Chris, you'll have more on that in our Home Depot coaching clinic uh, coming up later in the show. Just, just a warm-up shot there. Something to try and get lined up it often happens in the middle of, of matches when uh, one team is eliminated. So Josie Ernest with no pressure on her. Says, ah, let's go ahead and get my second strike of game two. Now a substitution for Vanderbilt since this one is already in the books. It's Tara Kane, the sophomore from Greensburg, Pennsylvania, former high school state champion. And a big boost for her confidence and a smile for Kane as she gets the strike. Just a future move there for Coach John Williams. Uh, his second bowler, Caitlin Reynolds, has, has struggled a little bit early here. She has some strikes but three of her four shots have crossed over left of the head pin so far. Reynolds replaced Kane in the lineup during the uh, regular season leading into these NCAA championships. Kane was a tournament winner earlier this year. An honorable mention All-American a season ago. And Vanderbilt takes the 2-0 lead. They are now two games away from winning their first ever national championship in bowling. The Commodores taking care of business and the Lady Hawks in trouble early. Game one, Vanderbilt taking the early lead and then able to fend off the late charge from Maryland Eastern Shore. Fantastic finishes, big shots at the right time. A lot of pressure on UMES to finish off game one. Unable to do it. It's 1 0. It was a low scoring game, and then in game two, Vanderbilt really picked it up. Start off with an early good break, and then they followed it up with five great shots in a row. A big six bagger, tough to overcome. Huge lead, and a 2 0 lead. 242 to 166 as Vanderbilt took a big leap forward, and Maryland Eastern Shore still looked like they. We're dealing with some nerves about playing in this national championship. It, it will be the first title for either one of these clubs. And they have never been this far before. And now Vanderbilt in black will start things off here in game three. They need two more games to win the title. And Harlequin on the low side. Her sister, Nicole, was also a collegiate bowler at uh, Sacred Heart. And ironically, her dad, Steve, uh, an assistant coach with Sacred Heart, a team they had to beat on Friday in the double elimination portion of this tournament. Picks up the spare. Interesting strategy, but it seemed to work out pretty good. Most of the time with pins like that, with Pins on the left side of the hip, and you would use angle going right to left at it to try and get the ball to cover as many as possible. She chose to shoot it from the left side. I assume to hit the left side of the hip pin. She got a little, little bit of an error there. Zanrusha tries to set the tone now for the Lady Hawks here in game three. Opens up with the strike. They need a big shot in the arm right here. Now, Caitlin Reynolds. Down on the low side in that left lane. The NCAA Women's Bowling Championships presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car from the Brunswick Wakaiva Lanes in Orlando. Chris Barnes along with Beth Mullins. Vanderbilt in black, Maryland Eastern Shore in the white shirts. And Vanderbilt winning game one in a tight matchup and then a blowout in game two 
in this best of seven series to determine the national championship. And she leaves it open. And she just overreacted to the last couple shots. She's had three or four shots go left of the head pin. That was you know, just an attempt to get it going to the right. She overcorrected, missing way right. A shake up in the lineup here for Maryland Eastern Shore, Marion Singleton, who usually bowls in the five spot. In the anchor position, steps up to the two spot. There are five bowlers per team. It's Baker format, and each rolls two frames per game. Well, probably not a bad move. Her, one of the best players on this team all year long. She has struggled so far, though. It does not look comfortable, does not look lined up. Her up in the second position with a little less heat on her, see if she can get her, her rhythm back then maybe move her back to her anchor position. One of the things that Sharon Brunel told us about her is she loves her mental toughness and her fortitude, and Marion will have to call upon that now through the rest of this championship match. Again in this left lane, we're seeing the teams trying to adjust. Another one missing on the low side from Greigel. Seems to be fairly consistent. In fact, on this left lane, I mean, it's a little bit slicker. I mean, there's a little bit more oil. The ball's not hooking as much, and they go light of the head pin. And with Maryland, we're having a hard time. They're just having a hard time getting lined up right now. They're really going to have to put something together here soon to have any chance. They do have the early lead here in game three. The third frame, Megan Raymond will look to cover the spare. Got to take care of the two and the five. Got it. Double digit lead for Maryland Eastern Shore as we move to the fourth. Mandy Kiley comes from a family of bowlers. Her brother Michael is a good bowler as well, and she gets the strike. That's her third so far of this championship match. Really good shot there. That's just high flush. Better rhythm. Very comfortable. Good post up at the finish. So now Raymond. Everybody sliding down a spot. She had been bowling in the three spot and now moves to the four spot. Michelle Wallace, excuse me. Looks like they've chosen to move just further right on the lane, period, and try and get to a, a different part of the lane to catch ball reaction. This one crosses about the eighth board as it hooks a little bit high for a four pin. That's not a bad shot, though. You can make an adjustment off that one and get lined up. Wallace converts. Vanderbilt down 12 as we... Reach the midway point now in the fifth round. Josie Ernest. Had thrown three, uh, two strikes in a row heading into that one. John Williamson and Hunter Brooks, the assistant coach, looking on. things close here. And now Worsley, who had been in the four spot, moves down to the anchor position. A 12-pin lead right now for the Lady Hawks. A little spin on that one to take care of business. And that might be exactly what the Lady Hawks need right now. So the strike for Worsley. Maryland Eastern Shore down by a couple of games, but they are up now midway through game three.
Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Bowling Championship. Vanderbilt and Maryland Eastern Shore, our Coke Classic storyline. Pretty even in game one, Vanderbilt taking it in a close one. But then in game two, Vanderbilt really improved as they wiped out the Lady Hawks in game two. Now here in the third, Maryland Eastern Shore bouncing back. They have the 12 pin lead at the midway point of this game three and Michelle Peliquin for Vanderbilt. After having six strikes in game two, Chris, they've got just one so far here in game three. Well, in game one, it gave this lane gave them some trouble too. They only shot 167, uh, very far off their average for the week. Looks like their leadoff player, Michelle, has moved further right, trying to find another line as well on this lane. Pretty good shot, uh, just leaving the flat 10. Able to pick it up. Vanderbilt falls further behind. The open frames are just rally killers. Because you don't throw very many frames yourself, you count on your teammates to keep the energy up high. And conversely, when an open like that happens, it really sucks the life out of your team. You have the next person has to be pretty strong and make a great shot there to get your get your team back on the right track. Zan Rusha will look to cover. Sophomore English major. Bramell has been real impressed with her work ethic uh, when she returned to the team. She actually takes some night classes and then has to bowl on her own after class. Converts. And Bramell loves her competitive spirit. It says a lot that she earned enough of the respect of her team to go back to the leadoff position, such an important position in the big department. Reynolds. And she has the same 10 pin to look at that Peliquin just had. Well, and this is Caitlin's best shot of the match so far. This looks like the form that got her into the starting lineup to begin with and, uh, and might keep her there the rest of the day and help lead her team to the national title. The first real recruiting class at Vanderbilt. The program just three years old. For the sophomore class, there are four of them in the starting lineup, and Ernest the freshman. And now Marion Singleton trying to get her confidence back. That'll help. And a smile from the freshman from Lockport, New York. Vanderbilt now down 24. Karen Grigal will try and pick up the spare. She's she tried to help this one up just a little too much. It's inside a target. They said this team looks like they've moved further right, right at the second arrow, out around the seventh or eighth board, and this one goes up about the ninth board. Too far inside, 24 7. Easy spare, though. Showing us why Coach John Williamson calls her the best spare shooter on the team. Eastern Shore now by 26. There's Megan Raymond. Second frame. Gets the strike. Two in a row now for the Lady Hawks. That's big for this team. It's a pretty close knit team. They do a lot of team building. Not a lot of hung heads out there. Even when they were getting beat up, they still look like they're in it. Not a lot of energy because not a lot was going positive for them. But they were still together. Sharon Brumell told us they had a big bonfire last weekend. Toasted some marshmallows, cooked some hot dogs. They like to play a lot of games. She likes to uh, build up not only their chemistry, but their competitiveness in a lot of different things that they do. Put them in uncomfortable positions to see how they respond and see how they stick together. Another open frame here from Vanderbilt. And the lead is up to 52. And barring any catastrophes, Maryland Eastern Shore is going to take this third game. 
and pull within one game in the match. And that, in fact, will mathematically do it right there. So after falling into the 2-0 hole, Maryland Eastern Shore comes back to take game three. They'll just roll it out here. And the number 10 points. That's impressive from the club that starts two freshmen and a sophomore. And Megan Raymond's the only senior in the entire match. And they bounce back nicely. Tara Kane will once again come on as a substitute here. Roll the tenth for Ernest. She stepped in and thrown some really good shots here. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see her make an appearance uh, before the tenth frame, before too long. She threw a strike in the tenth frame back in game two. Despair and now one more roll for Kane. And then it will be Worsley to close it out for Maryland Eastern Shore. This is the fourth NCAA championship. Nebraska won the first two. Fairly Dickinson picked up last year's championship. 51 bowling programs in the nation. And it's an interesting format for the Women's Bowling Championship. All levels are competing under one roof. Division one, Division two, and Division three all get an opportunity. When you sure can't say that either one of these teams luck their way in, they each beat Nebraska and Fairleigh Dickinson once to get here. They knocked off the number one and rank, two ranked teams in the tournament and in, in the nation in the polls and fairly convincingly to earn the right to be here today. It's been a pretty wild weekend on Thursday through four traditional rounds. There were three different team leaders. Then on Thursday, through two Baker rounds, two other teams had the lead to determine the seeding for the double elimination format of yesterday. And then in double elimination competition, the top two seeds were both bounced, barely Dickinson and Nebraska, by these two clubs competing in their first national championship final. Jessica Worsley, she was the MVP of the MEAC tournament last year. And has still been a big spark plug. And the coaching move pays off from Sharon Grimmel, moving Singleton from the five spot up to the two spot. And Worsley, the anchor. Maryland Eastern Shore, 202 to 152 here in game three to make things interesting. Chris Barnes and Tina Peak, the Home Depot Coaching Clinic. You might need to see some of those types of adjustments on this left lane, the right lane the teams are finding much better success on. You're absolutely right, Beth. This left lane has been, been the difficult one for both teams. Only one strike for each team in the last two games on this left lane. The left lane is the one that Maryland Eastern Shore will be on here in game number four. They win this. They tie it up. If Vanderbilt wins here, they are just one game away from the national championship. Zanrusha with one strike so far in the match. She's picked up spares on all her other opportunities and leaves that one open to start things off for Maryland Eastern Shore. Chris, we talked about the importance of the anchor position, and we're seeing, too, the importance of this leadoff spot and setting the tone for your team. Well, certainly I have bowled on some teams where we decided to put the best two players up at the beginning because the team that gets the early lead often goes on to win. And what we've seen in the first three games is if Pelequin is doing the better job, Vanderbilt wins the game. If Zanrusha did the better job, then Maryland Eastern Shore has gone on to win. Exactly right. Pelequin with her fourth strike of the tournament. And Vanderbilt jumps on top early. Marion Singleton had a 
a strike on her last ball. Two in a row for Mary. It looks like she's starting to find her groove again. She's been a great player for UMES this season, and I you know, see her get on track and will be key for the Lady Hawks to make a run. Caitlin Reynolds. And 3 9 10 left. Boy, and this one will be no picnic at all here. What she'll have to do is, is create a little bit of an angle, hit the right side of the three pin, and will have to deflect off the three pin and then split the 9 10. The 10, but not the 9. She almost made it outside there. And on this condition, that might have been her best chance, actually. It's been very, very difficult, probably a less than 20% chance to make that, sh that shot. So the door opens back up now for Maryland Eastern Shore. As they go back to the top. And a timely strike from Megan Raymond. That's two in a row for her. The senior coming through and her team needs her most right now. Karen Dragle. That's a big one for the confidence of Vanderbilt. And Eastern Shore up by double digits, working on two strikes in a row. This is Michelle Wallace. Side and another 3 9 10. Wow, that's very, very unusual. It's an unusual lead to begin with, and to see it twice within three shots is. Well, Reynolds just had a chance for Vanderbilt. Let's see what Wallace can do for it. Maryland Eastern Shore. Ten up. Pretty good attempt. Just needed to get her ball just a little further right on that three pin to have any chance. And this is a topsy turvy one. Vanderbilt back up by four. Well, as you would imagine, Vanderbilt leaves an open frame. The Lady Hawks grab the lead, and now Vanderbilt trying to capitalize on the open frame from Maryland Eastern Shore, and Kylie able to knock down just five pins on that one. Boy, oh, and the only time five's an easy spare is when you can't leave it. So, got the bucket with the 10 pin. Now you add the added difficulty of already trying to make the bucket, which is turning the three five into a pocket. And then make sure you don't send the six to the 10 or chop it off the five. And that's what she does there. So, Maryland Eastern Shore, they weren't down for long. <laughs> As we move to the fifth frame, Jessica Worsley in the anchor spot. The eight pin lead. You can see both teams now moving out to the right of the second arrow on this left lane, trying to find a better line of the pocket that's more consistent. This one just gets up the lane a little bit too much, pretty firm. Trips out the four for the two five, but that doesn't necessarily make it any easier. Worsley converts. But now Josie Ernest in the five spot. Down eight. And the freshman leaves the seven standard. Well, with Tara Kane coming in, bowling the 10th frame, she hasn't thrown a shot in nearly yeah. probably 12 minutes, almost 15 minutes now. This is a pretty good effort all in all. Picks it up. Midway through game four, Vanderbilt 
up in the match, but trailing here in game four. It's an eight pin lead from Maryland Eastern Shore. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Bowling Championships presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Maryland Eastern Shore taking on Vanderbilt here in Orlando. Vanderbilt with the two games to one advantage. We are in the fourth. And ESPN2 will cover the Men's Gymnastics National Championship on Tuesday, April 17th, beginning at 3 o'clock Eastern with coverage of the team competition. For a preview of the NCAA Men's Gymnastics Championships, visit NCAAsports.com. The official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. And for one of these clubs, Chris, uh, an opportunity to take home their first ever national title. Neither of these teams has ever been this far before. Maryland Eastern Shore with the eight pin lead midway through game four. And Laura Zanrusha in the leadoff spot coming back around again. Baker format, five players, each of them bowl two frames. And a tough roll coming up for Laura. Yeah, I think the toughest shot to make is the first shot out of the commercial break. The shot's pretty firm, just a touch right. Hit then falls by, leaves the 210. She will have to hit the left side of that two pin and slide it into the 10 pin. They are on that left lane, and these players have found much more success on the right lane through these first three and a half games of the match. Best of seven to decide the national championship. And just like that, once again, Vanderbilt's back up by five now. The open frame pushes the lead to the other side. Peliquin struck on her last roll. Just like we saw earlier in this game, Vanderbilt might give the lead right back. You can sense the frustration from Peliquin there. Well, she's been so solid all the way through here. She missed a spare in the first frame that she normally makes 95% you know, of the time, and now she washes out in the sixth frame. The team up, makes a great shot at it, but Again, we have another lead change now, and the Lady Hawks are up by 10. So the 10-point advantage now for Marion Singleton. After a shaky game two and the shift in the lineup, Marion has scored much better. Two five remains. It looked like a pretty good shot there, right? About five feet in front of the head pin when it looked like her ball was gonna turn up and go through the pocket. It, almost like it hit a little basketball of oil down there. It, it skidded a little bit, pushed by the head pin, and she leaves the 2-5 on what looked like a really good shot. And she covers. And Eastern Shore maintains the lead, looking to tie up the match here in game four. And another lineup change now from Vanderbilt. Tara Kane will come in the two spot. Replacing Caitlin Reynolds. After Reynolds had left three open frames in a row. Pretty good shot here, gets just right of the head pin. This ball tries pretty hard to make it back up the hill. Head pin goes around the two, four, five. Missed it. And it seems that all the spares are tough this game. Six and a half, now seven frames in. We've already had five lead changes, but now Maryland Eastern Shore is up by 22 pins. Raymond, the senior. Comes up big again. Three strikes in a row for Raymond as she has settled in nicely. That high back swing creates so much power for her. Lots of ball speed, and she has enough rotation to make that ball drive through the pins. Fraggle. The nine stays up. 
Holland Eastern Shore trying to pull away here late in game four to even this match. Three strikes so far on the day for Karen. Converts the spare. The number of opens we've seen so far, anything's possible here in these last two. <laughs> Wallace, with a couple of strikes, three spares, has left two open. Including an open frame earlier in this fourth game. That actually looked like a better shot compared to Singleton's who got to that spot and actually skidded by it. Hers rolled right through it and actually went high. And that explains all the trouble that everybody's had on this left lane. Today, big strike for her. She does exactly what she needs to do there for her team to have a chance. If they were to strike out, they would shoot 169. Down 19 now as we head into the 10th frame. Jessica needs 19 pins in this frame to shut out game four. up nine on the first roll, so a spare strike would close it out for Maryland Eastern Shore. And a strike to finish it up, regardless of what Josie Ernest could do in the 10th. Worsley? Sharon Brumell says she's like my daughter. She's always in my office. She's always talking bowling. Real goal-oriented, focused young woman. Chance to even up the match for her team. Oh. And she does. Huge break for her team right here as the ball crosses over. Kicks out the six pin and shuts out game four, evening this up at two games apiece. Jessica Worsley able to close it out, and now Josie Ernest here in the 10th for Vanderbilt. So Vanderbilt, after jumping up to zip, all of a sudden finds this match dead even as Maryland Eastern Shore comes roaring back Worsley was able to close it out, Chris, but it was really the play of Megan Raymond who had two strikes in the uh, middle of this game. The Pontiac game-changing performance. Really good shots here. Lots of backswing, lots of speed. Puts it online, gives her team a boost, throws two big strikes, saves her team a count that allows UMES to close out game four. So Maryland Eastern Shore, a winner in game four. Our national championship match, best of seven, has just become best of three to decide the title. Maryland Eastern Shore and Vanderbilt all even at two games apiece, one of them on the verge of winning their first bowling national championship. Vandy took the first two games and Maryland Eastern Shore bouncing back to take the last two. And open frames really hurting the Commodores in those last two games. They had the best game of this championship in game two, throwing a 242, but they have gone way down in their last two games. While Maryland Eastern Shore has been kind of steady Eddie as Pelican. Tries to set the tone with the leadoff strike. Your counterpart, Laura Zanrusha. Sharon Brumell and the Lady Hawks making the lineup change after the first two games, and that's made a difference for them. 
and a tough spare shot coming up for Laura. Yeah, the shot's just too firm, which I think is her well. It's what she wants to go to. Target-wise, not bad, maybe just a board right at target, but the speed of it stops it from picking up. Leaves the one, two, four, ten called the washout. And she'll have to hit the left side of the head pin here and send it over into the ten pin. And it looks like a substitution for Maryland Eastern Shore. Christine King will come on and throw the second ball. There is a no re-entry rule. So King would also have to bowl the sixth frame. And Zanrusha could return for game six. the roll. What a cover by Christine King. <laughs> this never happens. Watch the two pin. Goes off the four, into the wall, back across, scouts the 10 out. At the same time, she got lined up to the pocket. That's a best of all world situation there for doing the S. And another serendipitous bounce this time for Vanderbilt. Tara Kane now gets the start in the two spot for Vandy. So John Williamson makes a lineup change as Kane takes over for Reynolds. A couple of strikes to start out for Vandy. Here's the lineup change for Maryland Eastern Shore. Singleton moving from the five spot to the two spot. And she has been a totally different player since then. Coach took a little bit of the heat off of her, got her loosen up a little bit. She's a freshman in her first national championship match, and it certainly seems to have paid off. And Ragle, three strikes in a row to start out for Vandy. And this is what we expected to see out of these two teams from the very beginning, judging by what they did to everyone all week long. Both these teams have actually performed better when their backs have been up against the wall a little bit. When they've lost the momentum, they've countered. And Megan Raymond continues to roll along. That's four strikes in a row for Megan, dating back to game three. Andy with the 10 pin lead. Ailey. Four in a row for the Commodores. Or the difference that a, well, a commercial break makes. <laughs> Chris, they've had four strikes combined in the last two games, and now they start out with four in a row to take the 20 pin lead. Wallace. You hear a team saying six. You hear a team saying push from the very beginning there. Inside a target, up the lane. Pretty fortunate to leave nine, or to leave just the, the six pin. Some nines are definitely better than others. That's a good nine. Covers. Now we're going to have to fight from behind here in game five. Vanderbilt storming out. Working on four strikes. Looks right by the ten. Wow, that shot was really, really good. Josie Ernest, the top prep recruit in the country coming out of high school last year. Her parents own a bowling center. She's grown up around the game. See, she has great timing. She posts up every shot at the foul line. Forms perfect. She doesn't make very many errors left and right. And her speed's consistent, but it's made her one of the best players in the nation this year. Midway through game one, Vanderbilt by 20. Miss Morsley will finish things up here in the fifth. The last bowler for Maryland Eastern Shore. It's Baker format. Five bowlers, each roll two frames. This shot goes a little bit high. It looked like for a minute she might get a break here as the two pin rolls around and tries to knock the six over which would have not fell over into the three pin for a, a big strike for UMES. 
shot, covers. Vanderbilt by 22, trying to take a 3-2 lead. The Commodores and the Lady Hawks vying for the national championship here in Orlando. The NCAA Women's Bowling National Championship match all tied up. Best of seven. We are at two apiece. Chris Barnes along with Beth Mullins. Vanderbilt in black and Maryland Eastern Shore in the white shirts. One of these teams will take home their first ever bowling national championship at the end of the day. Midway through this fifth game with Vanderbilt in front. Up 22 pins. Once again, that first shot coming out of the break. Just a little bit high, a little bit tight, like a rhythm. Natural tendency is to pull it inside a target. Fortunate to leave just the six pin. Well, she knew that one was off the moment she let it go. Pelican leaves it open. The teams combined for seven open frames in that fourth game, and the lead changed on every one of them. And now the deficit for the Lady Hawks is down to just 10. For Christine King, the substitute here in game five. After picking up the big spare in her first roll, she comes right back with a strike. Looks like a pretty good move by the coach, huh? <laughs> Not bad at all to bring King in. And now Tara Kane, another good coaching decision. She struck on her first roll of this game. Back to back for Kane. The fifth strike of this game for Vandy. All of a sudden, this left lane that looks like by far the tougher lane doesn't look so bad anymore. <laughs> Singleton looking to strike here to even up the game. Instead leaves the two five seven. This shot was just too firm. It was online. Target wise, speed pushed it right past the break point. Even a very difficult split. And she leaves it open. And just like that, the 10 pin deficit is up to 24. Rigel gets it to fall. The seven lingered, but not for long. 6th strike of the game and the lead is up to 34. Raymond, the steady Eddie of this Lady Hawk Club. She gets one of her own. That's five in a row for Megan Raymond. Mandy Kiley. A spare shot coming up. Pretty good shot here. The key for her is to be able to keep her speed down. If she keeps her speed down, the ball picks up a roll and goes through the pinch. Gets a touch firm. It's on top of the oil down lane. It's not in contact with it, so it gets deflected more when it hits the pins. She leaves more single pins than she would otherwise. Picks up the spare now. Vanderbilt gets closer to closing out this game. Wallace and Worsley left for Maryland Eastern Shore. Must strike here. And she does. The most the Lady Hawks can shoot is 223. Vanderbilt. Needs 18 pins 
in these two shots to shut them out. It comes down to the two anchors. Ernest leaves the 10. A spare here in nine will be enough to win game five. Anything less will give Jessica Worsley a chance to step up here in the 10th and win, put their team in the lead. Spare the spare. Now, need nine, now needs nine here to make Worsley's rolls insignificant. Time and time again in this tournament, she's stepped up, made the big shots for their teams to win games, to shoot 300, to do everything big. She needs to do it one more time. The freshman delivers. Ernest gets just enough. Vandy at 224 closes the door on Maryland Eastern Shore. Clutch by Josie Ernest. And Vandy takes game five. They are now one game away from the national championship. Worsley will just roll out. Well, they've been down before, Chris, and rallied to tie the match, and now they will face a must-win situation. Maryland Eastern Shore has to take game six and seven. Vanderbilt, a 3-2 edge in the national championship in Orlando. The NCAA Women's Bowling Championship presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. There is the national championship trophy on the left. Vanderbilt won game away from taking that back to Nashville. Well, let's take a look now at the Disney dream come true moment back in the opening frame of that fifth game coming on as a substitute. Christine King doing the unlikely. And watch that two pin scoot across and take down the 10. That dream come true presented by Disney theme parks. Unfortunately for Maryland Eastern Shore that was not enough to negate the six strikes rolled by Vanderbilt in that fifth game. And they have the 3-2 advantage, and now King will stay in the match as the leadoff here in game six, replacing Zanrusha. Starts it out with a strike. Really nice shot. She's got great ball roll. This ball picks up, rolls through the pins. Six demolishes the 10, no doubt. Sometimes you got to go with the hot hand, and since coming on, King picked up the spare, struck, and then struck again. And now Poliquin. <laughs> King still standing. Trying to get her confidence back here, Chris, after leaving an open frame in the last game. She hasn't been nearly as on as she was the first two games, which helped Vanderbilt come out to a 2-0 lead. She is still a great spare shooter. That ball there may have not been her fault, and that's as the leadoff, you have to take one for the team sometimes. It looked like that ball hooked early. Probably a product of the fact that Maryland Eastern Shore has all moved to the right two in a similar part of the lane, transferring the ball from the front of it from the lane, down lane, making her ball pick up too quick. That's part of the uh, fun of the team aspect of these championships. You've got all your teammates standing right behind you. You can share information about the conditions of the lane. You can play cheerleader when it's not your turn. Singleton. Three, six, and ten are up. I think it makes everything greater. The thrill of victory and the, yep. the agony of defeat. Uh, these are 
young teams as well. Megan Raymond of Maryland Eastern Shore is the only senior. Everybody else will be back next year. And Marion Singleton covers. Even. Second frame for Vandy, and it's Tara Kane. A couple of strikes in game five for Kane. Have a spare opportunity here in game six. She's come on really strong, even when she was warming up and throwing fill shots at the end of, of game uh, two. She looked like she was pretty lined up, much like Christine King for the Lady Hawks. A slight edge for Maryland Eastern Shore. A must win situation for them here in the sixth. Raymond trying to keep her strike streak alive. She had thrown five in a row before that. Must be a little warm back there. They got all the fans going. Encouraging Raymond to pick this up. Open frame and an open door for Vandy now. It was five strikes in a row. She had not shot her to spare in about a half hour. Uh, nope. Looking to jump on this opportunity. There's 7-10. And this will be a tough one after Vanderbilt had taken a double-digit lead. The count is not ultimately really important here. She should try and make it. She looks like she did. Still gets the count while making a pretty good effort at making the split. So Maryland Eastern Shore not hurt by their open frame as they move back in front. Wallace. On, yeah. Gets the strike. Really good shot there for her second strike in a row. Looks like she's picked up the line a little bit and some confidence. Mandy Kylie, the left hander. Ten stays up. Well, made a better move for her, though. You can tell the shots where she gets behind it and rolls it a little bit more. It picks up better. Makes a stronger move through the pocket instead of the ball going by the five pin and leaving it like it did the last time on this lane. It drove it and almost knocked it into the ten. A couple of strikes. The difference so far for Maryland Eastern Shore here in game six. As we move to the fifth frame, and the Lady Hawks with the lead. Jessica Worsley. And Worsley delivers. Back to back strikes for Maryland Eastern Shore. Doing exactly what they need to do, faced with elimination. Does what you need the anchor to do. Comes through with the first strike of game six for Vandy. It's must win for Maryland Eastern Shore. And they have the 13 pin advantage midway through game six to decide the national championship. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Bowling Championship presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Maryland Eastern Shore trying to stay alive. Down three to two to Vanderbilt here in the best of seven. National Championship. ESPN2 will cover the Men's Gymnastics National Championship on Tuesday, April 17th. That starts at 3 o'clock Eastern. For a preview of the NCAA Men's Gymnastics Championships, visit NCAAsports.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. And for one of these teams, their first ever National Championship in women's bowling, Vanderbilt, their program has only been around for three years. 
Maryland Eastern Shore. They've been to the NCAA tournament now. This is their fourth year in a row. They had not won a match here until this season. And here they are playing for the championship. And Christine King, they are midway home to winning this game six. They force a game seven. And King has been phenomenal coming out of the bullpen here in games five and six. Pretty good shot here. Looks like she moved a little bit left off her first shot, which hooked quite a bit more. Comes up just a touch high. Almost trips the four out. And on the spare, leaves your team down by 23, the Lady Hawks. The lead building now. For Maryland Eastern Shore, they're working on three strikes in a row for Marion Singleton. Make it four. And the lead is up to 33 now for the Lady Hawks. Hurricane. Looking for some help on the 10 pin and doesn't get it. Another good shot for you. Watch the six pin. Second one from the right goes in the gutter and lays there. And that's why we call it the flat 10. But the lead grows for Maryland Eastern Shore. And now Megan Raymond trying to make it five straight. Got it. The Eastern Shore looking to close the door here on Vandy and force game seven. 44 pins up now in the eighth frame. Pretty good shot here, but a little bit of a bad break as direct as she is to cut through the heart and the ball goes left of the nine pin. And the two pin goes around the four. sixth game and that'll do it for the Lady Hawks they will even up this championship match and we will decide the national champion in the seventh and deciding game Now, this would be the interesting part because Vanderbilt, as the higher seed, will get to choose which lane they finish on. Early on, the left lane seemed to be much tougher. Now, the last two games, the big games have both been on the left lane. Be interesting to see where Coach John Williamson and the Vanderbilt Commodores choose to finish game seven. Worsley picks it up. 
We see her say one more, ladies, one more, as we will have a seventh game to decide this national championship. And we've seen it on three occasions now. A team that has lost the momentum, is in trouble, has come back strong when they have had to have a good outing. Well, I think the Lady Hawks have made Coach Williamson's choice a little bit easier. 235, you have to get them off that lane and change up the pace for them. Ashley Belden will come on as a substitute here for Ernest. And delivers for her team. And a decision to be made now by John Williamson, the coach for Vandy as to whether he will move his club back over to that left lane for this seventh game. The right lane was where the winners were early in the match, and now the left lane has taken the last two. One to go to decide the national championship. Maryland Eastern Shore takes game six, and they take Vanderbilt right down to the wire. Back for the deciding game after this. One of these teams about to take home the national championship trophy, Maryland Eastern Shore and Vanderbilt all tied up at three apiece. Beth Mullins along with Chris Barnes, Vanderbilt on the right in the black jerseys, Maryland Eastern Shore in the white, and as you anticipated, John Williamson does make the lane change, and so the Commodores will be in that left lane. And Michelle Pelequin starts him off with a strike. Well, and a Brooklyn strike at that, and oftentimes a lucky break that you can capitalize on turns the tide in the favor of the winning team. That has been the case in every game so far. The better leadoff has resulted in her team winning. And now Christine King, who has tossed three strikes in a row, will start it off for the Lady Hawks. Oh, and she gets it in too. Left to target, but she's not nearly as fortunate. She leaves the 3-6-9-10, which is one of the most difficult non-split leaves in bowling. And the reason why it's difficult is because you have to get the ball right of the three pin where there's more oil in the lane. It's harder for your ball to pick up. The ball has to hit the three, the six, and the nine. The three pins furthest left there, and the six has to hit the ten. And that's why it's hard. It's hard to get your ball to get back to the nine pin after you hit the three and the six pin. And the nine is left up. Open frame for Maryland Eastern Shore and Vanderbilt takes the early lead. Tara Kane now, five bowlers, each of them rolled two frames under the Baker format. Two, four, five remain. Pretty good shot, it's the hardest thing to do when you only throw a shot every you know, five to eight minutes is to keep your speed and rhythm consistent just a little bit firmer and the conditions are tough enough today that that's enough to instead of throwing a strike you leave it a rather difficult spare Marion Singleton now the freshman shot there. Every shot now is difficult. This one crosses the 12th board a little bit softer. Cuts through the head pin just a touch. Two goes around the four pin. Nine spare though will leave her team up by three pins. 
two frames into this deciding game seven in Maryland Eastern Shore with the advantage. Karen Grable strikes right back for Vandy. Well, she wasted no time in getting up there and getting the momentum back on in her team's favor. And a big sigh of relief from Grigel. And now it's the senior, Megan Raymond. She has thrown a lot of strikes today. Wow. Uh, this is a pretty good shot with all the backswing that she has and all the speed that she creates. She doesn't get quite as much rotation, a little bit more up the back. The ball goes through the pins a little flatter, deflects past that five pin. And instead of shooting it into the seven, she not only leaves it, but she leaves the five and the seven. Getting some advice from Jessica Worsley, who leans in. Teammates behind the bowlers, they can help out. Does not get the ricochet. Second open frame through three here for Eastern Shore and Vanderbilt's on top. Mandy Kiley. It's nine on her first roll. Littleton, Colorado. A huge spare for her early in the match. She had a lot of trouble. She missed four spares, some of them pretty difficult. She's responded now with four straight nine spares. And this one was a big one for her team. Three strikes in a row for Michelle Wallace. Almost got the fourth. Players coming from all over the country. Recruiting for college bowling, similar to other sports. A lot of big high school tournaments around the country during the summer. Now in Eastern Shore, it was interesting talking to Coach Sharon Brummel. She said there is no high school bowling in, in the states right around them. Maryland, Delaware, and Virginia, so they often have to go even further. Josie Ernest leaves a tough split up for Vandy here in the fifth. Could be a little bit of a tough call whether to have her try and make the split or not. She is a good spare shooter. She did try to make it. Just misses, probably less than a 5% chance of making that split. And the lead changes hands again with Maryland Eastern Shore now going up by four pins. Jessica Worsley. Spare shot coming for Worsley. And this will be the midway point of the deciding game seven for the national championship. When you can feel it, all the spans are getting a little shorter now. <laughs> oh, Worsley left it open. And the lead bounces back over to Vanderbilt. Five frames to go to decide who will take home the national championship hardware. The NCAA Women's Bowling Championship presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Five frames to go to decide who wins their first ever bowling national title. Vanderbilt jumped on top two games to none. Then Maryland Eastern Shore tied it up. And we continue to go back and forth in games five and six. And now here in the seventh at the midway point, Vanderbilt on top by eight pins. Beth Mullins along with Chris Barnes here in Orlando. Michelle Peliquin in that leadoff spot now here in the sixth. And strikes again.
Big time shot there by the team, by the person who's been the catalyst for her team. These last five frames, they knew her the most. She steps right up there and sends the message. An intense and fiery competitor. Pelequin sets the tone, and now the pressure shifts over to Christine King. right back and that is a great answer there After that first frame where she left the three six nine ten was unable to convert comes right back keeps her team in this game Vandy couldn't build on the lead and now Tara Kane two in a row for the doors Young woman who lost her starting job late in the season. Her confidence took a hit, but boy, has she come through big here at this NCAA tournament, and particularly in this championship match. And now it's Marion Singleton's turn. Down 18. There's a spare ball coming. After Singleton, just three bowlers apiece. Converts the score. I think this is the most pressure that you can have in, in bowling is to have your whole team behind you throwing one, two frames per game in just a shot every five minutes. Up 18 teams, Karen Greigel. And try and take care of business on the spare shot. We saw last year Fairleigh Dickinson. They had never won a championship in any sport. They won the bowling title. And now Vanderbilt looking for the first national championship in school history. With the lead here late in the deciding seventh game. Rival gets the spare. Megan Raymond. Looking to go out a winner. Throwing her last shot of her collegiate career. Come on, Megan! And she makes it count. Vanderbilt by 17. Two frames remain. Mandy Kiley, big strike for the Commodores. And that shot just sawed the rack. Came back from almost the third board, all the way back through. Pummels the pocket, sends the five crashing into the 10 pin. Inching closer to that first championship in school history. Michelle Wallace trying to prevent that celebration. Vanderbilt fans now starting to feel it. Wallace will go to her spare ball. On the spare, the most Maryland Eastern Shore can shoot is 174. Picks up the spare. Spare and four pins to win the national title. Basically, just needs to keep this one on the lane. Four pins from a national championship for the Commodores on this roll. And that'll be more than enough. The 
the Vanderbilt Commodores win the first national championship in school history, the 2007 National Collegiate Women's Bowling Titleists. Josie Ernest, the top player coming out of high school in the country last year, and in her first season, helps Vanderbilt win a national championship in just the third year of the program's existence. <laughs> Ashley Belden out there, getting an opportunity. Worsley will just roll it out for Maryland Eastern Shore and the championship huddle over there for the Commodores. Maryland Eastern Shore got in an early hole, dug themselves up, fell behind, dug themselves out again. And Vanderbilt in a deciding game seven, 198 to 150 is the final. The Commodores win the national championship.